Wall Street brokers provide contacts on securities in a number of ways. Some of the most common are price targets, analyst ratings, earnings revisions, and consensus estimates. Together, they provide insight for investors into the future performance of the business, as well as the prevailing sentiment. And today I'm going to show you how you can access all of this information, how to translate it, and where to find it inside of Coifin. In this video, we're going to show you a number of places where you can find and utilize this data. We'll be going through analyst estimates pages, the charting tools, the watch list, screener, and then a few other areas. We'll start with analyst estimates pages. So whenever you're filtered on a security in Coifin, you'll see down here, I've got Nvidia filtered. Coifin is going to assume that most of the stuff that you want to see is in relation to that security. So I'm going to go down here to the analyst estimates tab, and this is where you're going to find the bulk of the data. The first page is actuals and consensus, and this is going to give you as reported numbers on a trailing basis. You'll see here that we're giving you the last few years. You can change the time period as well. And on a forward basis, we're going to give you what Wall Street brokers are expecting of a company um, in terms of sales, gross profits, margins, debt levels, everything that you can think of. We have all that data and you can display this both on an annual or a quarterly basis and you can change the currency as well. So very quickly, what we can see here is that last year, NVIDIA did $26.9 billion in sales. And for the next year, they're going to be doing 54, apparently. We can go up here to the settings and we can change this in billions just to make it a little bit easier to read. And we can also change the number of decimal points shown as well, the currency postfix and some period end dates. If we want to add additional estimate data, this will also give us the average, the median, the high, the low, and the number of analysts covering as well for all of the numbers, if you want that extra level of detail. The data in this table can be utilized throughout Coifin, but we'll show more examples of that in just a moment. The next segment is price target data. These price targets provide insight into a company's expected future performance. So when the price target is greater than the current share price, this implies that Wall Street brokers expect positive returns in the near term and vis-a-vis. -vis. These price targets are based on an array of variables, expected fundamentals, macroeconomic conditions, competitive forces, industry trends, regulation, as well as a heap of other external and internal factors. They're not an exact science, but they can prove useful in assessing risk, reward, and the timing of entry and exit points of investment decisions. So we can see here that NVIDIA's high price target is $1,100. The low is $439. The current share price is around that range and the average is $640. We can also see how this price targets change over time, as well as the differential between the share price and the average price target. So right now we can see that Nvidia's average price target is about 46% above where it currently trades. Over here on the left, you'll see analyst ratings as well. So typically when brokers issue a price target, they'll also issue a rating on the stock. We can see the number of covering analysts for this company, which currently is 53. So analyst ratings are a valuable resource for investors considering a company like NVIDIA as they represent a collective insight of experts who have studied and followed that company, its industry, and the wider market. The number of covering analysts will vary for each company. At present, NVIDIA has 53. And the recommendations typically go from strong sell, sell, hold, buy, to strong buy. They can differ depending on how each broker specifies what their ratings are. So always be aware of that. And we can also see how the analyst rating has changed over time. And we can also see that despite the aggressive share price momentum of NVIDIA in the last year or so, analysts still have a buy rating to strong buy on the stock. Next up, we have estimates overview. This is a cleaner version of the actuals and consensus tab. It focuses on the next quarter up here, as well as the next few years, we break that out on a quarterly basis and an annual basis. And we give you the five fundamental metrics of sales, EBITDA, EBIT, EPS, and EPS gap. And we also have a relationship between the estimate that you're currently filtered on, which in this case is sales, and the share price over time. Typically when these two variables move in unison, so they go up at the same time, down at the same time, it implies that the relationship between the share price and the metric you're looking at is strong. In some instances, you might see these two metrics diverge, and that can imply that something external to the company is weighing on the share price. And lastly, we have the estimates trend tab. So this is going to show you how these estimates change over time. And with NVIDIA, it's particularly interesting. 
So we can see here that towards the end of 2019 to the start of 2023, before NVIDIA started reporting their Q1 and Q2 reports where they increased guidance so heavily, you can see the average estimate for the second quarter of 2025, for example, for sales was about 8.7 billion. That's since been revised upwards twice, once in Q1 to 13.3 billion, and once again in Q2 after they issued their report to 19.96 billion. So we can see how these change over time. Down here, we break that out in an itemized table. So you can see each quarter, you can see the range of estimates, the average, as well as the year over year change and quarter over quarter change. And you can break that out between years and quarters as well. If you want to take this chart and do more stuff with it, you have this button here, which you can click, which will take you to a G chart in Coifin, and you can see how that's changed over time. And you can also change the style of the graph as well. You can change it to area chart, line charts. You can change the estimate period as well as the consistency of the line and how it's presented. If you've ever watched the Coifin Charts Masterclass, I recommend you check that out. We break down how to get the best out of your charts in that video. So now that we've seen where the data lives, we're going to go visit some of the other places that you can utilize this data. The first instance is charting. So we've opened up a chart of NVIDIA and we want to look at some forward estimate data. The best way to do that is to open up the data series selector. And down here, we actually have a tab specifically for all of this data. So we can open the analyst estimates tab and we have ratings, price target data, forward estimates, and forward growth. Estimates is going to be the numerical value. So the dollar amount of sales expected of a company or CapEx or whatever metric you're looking at. And forward growth is going to be on a percentage basis. So let's say, for example, we want to look at the average price target of NVIDIA over time. And then we also want to look at the average analyst rating as well. We can plot these two things on a chart. We can change how they're formatted and we can also add a number of other variables to the chart as well. So you can see here that I've got the average price target over time and I've got NVIDIA's share price. And if I go back to the analyst estimates tab as well, and I go on price target, I can also add the price target difference to stock price. We'll take the average basis here. And we can see right now we've got a 40% difference between the average price target and NVIDIA's share price. And if we really want to hone in on that, we can pull back the time period to five years, for example, and we can see how that relationship changes over time. We can also use this data to compare across multiple securities. So I have the average analyst rating for NVIDIA up here. I'm going to add Meta. I'm going to add Apple. And I'm going to add Microsoft as well. So now we can see the average rating for each of these four companies, as well as the rate of change over time. We can quickly see that Meta's average rating has shot up over the past year. We can see that NVIDIA's has too, while Microsoft's and Apple's have been slowly drifting downwards. And just sticking with NVIDIA once again, I'm going to go to the Analyst Estimates tab. I'm going to go to Forward Estimates, and we're going to pull out some EBIT, and we're going to see how that changes over time. So we've got the EBIT consensus average, and now we get to pick a reporting period. And here's how it would look if we plotted out the next five years. So let's say we want this view for a number of different securities. The best thing to do here would be to save this chart as a template. We could call it Forward Revenue Estimates. We would save that as new. So now every time that we want to see this view for a particular company, all we have to do is change the security and we get that same view. This is useful because you can pull these charting templates into custom dashboards where you can set up a watch list, you can add a financial graph component, and then you can go down to that template that you've just created for revenue estimates. And now every time that you select a different company, it's going to pull up that same view for you. So I've got Lululemon here. If I change to Apple, if I change to Match Group, it's going to give me that same view that I want. So the next area that you can utilize this data is going to be in the watch list, an insanely powerful feature, which I think powers a lot of the Coifin platform. Right now, I've just created a new watch list called Forward Estimates. I've added a few tickers of the big tech companies. Because this is a new template, we just give you a bunch of columns that you may or may not want to use. The first thing I'm going to do is jump in there and just delete all of those columns I don't want. And similar to the graphing feature, all of the data is going to live here in the Analyst Estimates tab where you have access to all of the same data sets. So I might want to show the consensus estimate for 2023 sales. And then I might also want to show what that looks like as a percentage term as well. So it would come down here into forward growth. I would select revenue estimate year over year change as a percentage. And I would click first unreported fiscal year. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me the 
the next year's estimates average. And it's also going to express that in a percentage term as well. If I wanted to, I could go in here and change the nomenclature of these metrics. So this one currently says revenue estimate average first unreported fiscal year. I could simply just change that to 2023 if I want. I can also change this as well to revenues year over year percentage with an E. So here I've replicated that view and of revenues with EBIT. I've got next year's EBIT in numerical terms, as well as the estimate on a percentage basis. I've got free cash flow expected next year. I've got analyst ratings. I've got the current share price, the average price target, and the percentage difference between those two. So right now, out of these companies, I can see that Tesla is currently above the average price target. The rest of them are currently under it. But if you instead want to focus on one particular metric, like right here, I've got revenues, for example, over the next one, two, three, four, five years, as well as the year-over-year -year change, you can create these views as well and quickly analyze a bunch of companies on that basis. While using the analyst estimates tab is going to give you this same view with more fundamental metrics for a single security, the watch list is a great way to compare metrics across a basket of securities. And the last thing I want to show you in the watch list is how you can utilize earnings revisions in a watch list setting. So the first thing I'm going to do is quickly pull up uh, an S&P watch list. And the easiest way to do that is type in the ETF that tracks the index that you're looking at. We'll go to the holdings page here. We'll just take all these holdings and we'll save them as a watch list and we'll call that S&P 500. And we'll go to that watch list. So now what we have here is a watch list populated of all the constituents of the S&P. We're going to delete all those columns again that we don't want. We're going to go back into the analyst estimates data and we're going to go to the estimates revisions tab. So we might be interested in seeing something as simple as which companies in the S&P 500 have had their EBIT for 2023 revised up in the last two quarters. So this means that the 2023 EBIT figure has been revised in the last six months. We're going to click that. You can also click three months as well, just to give you some insight into how that changes. And if we filter here by the top to the bottom, we can see that these companies are the ones that have had their EBIT revised upwards in the last six months. And we can also see the percentage of the revision as well. So I've filtered from top to bottom. So we can see that NVIDIA is top of the table. In the last six months, EBIT has been revised upwards for 2023 by more than 140%. We can see that MGM, Pulte Group, Amazon, Wynn Resorts, these are some of the companies that have had their earnings revised upwards quite heavily. We can also do the same and see which ones have had their earnings revised down. So Boeing Company is right there on the bottom of the list. And you can build the same view for any basket of companies you want, whether that's an index, a portfolio of companies that you're tracking. And you can also expand beyond EBIT and use EPS, revenue, or other fundamental data points. So the forward estimates data lives all throughout Coifin, and you can take it and drag it and put it into almost any component that you want. You'll see here in the snapshot section, for example, we give you a quick flash of analyst estimates for whatever company that you're filtered on. But the last main place that I want to show you where you can utilize this data is the global stock screener. So here I've opened up a new screener. We're going to start from scratch and we're going to call this one earnings revisions. And similar to the watch list, we're just going to focus on the S&P. So I'm going to highlight ETF constituents, and I'm going to choose the S&P here to narrow down that investment universe. So I'm going to start a screener from scratch. And similar to the watch list example, I'm just going to break down the investment universe to only include the S&P 500. I'm going to get rid of this market cap criteria, and I'm going to add my own. So I'm going to go back to the analyst estimates tab. I'm going to go to earnings revisions. And what I want to establish here is... I'm only interested in companies that have had their revenue revised upwards for 2023 in the last three months. So I'm going to go to estimates revisions. I'm going to go to consensus average revision for revenues. Now, during earnings season, this is particularly useful because while companies are reporting, you'll get more of an insight. For example, if, uh, if CrowdStrike or Starbucks reported last week and they had their revenues revised upwards, you could reduce the time period of the revision to one week or one month to get more recency. In this case, we're going to go with three months because we're a bit past earnings season right now. And we can see that we have 499 companies to choose from. If I simply just change the revenue estimate for the full year to zero to imply that we don't want anything that's had it revised downwards, that cuts about half of the companies. And we only want to look at companies that have had the revenue estimate revised upwards by more than 25%. There's only one. And if we want to just change that to something a bit more moderate, we could go to 10%. We can see there's only five companies in that list that have had their revenue revised upwards. So we're going to go ahead and create that screen. And the output here is NVIDIA, Lennar Corporation, Extra Space Storage, PPL Corp, and NRG Energy. 
this might be a good starting point to explore these companies further, or we might want to build something a bit more robust. So we can go ahead and do that now. We'll create another screen. This time, we're going to focus on companies that are located within the UK. So we're going to go ahead and switch the changing region to Europe. We're going to change the country to the United Kingdom. We're going to change our market cap criteria to companies that are bigger than 250 million pounds. We're going to go back into analyst estimates here as well. So we might only be interested in companies that are trading below their average price target. So we're going to go here, price target difference, select average. We're going to put the top of the range to zero to imply that we only want negative values here. And there's only 12 currently. That might be enough for us. So we can go ahead and create that screen and check out that output if we want to. We're going to go over one last example here to show you how you can incorporate this data. So we're photoed on the US right now. We don't have a strict market cap range. If, for example, we want to look at dividend growth stocks in the US, this is vital because not only is it important that a dividend company has paid its dividend over time, it's more important that they can continue to pay it. So we can set up a pretty basic dividend screener here. I'll go ahead and do that, and then we can jump to the estimates data. What we set up here is a bunch of data series or parameters for the screener that partially relate to the dividend health and then also relate to the forward health of the company. So here I've got a pretty broad market cap range. I've got the payout ratio. So the dividends and the net income relationship to be under 100%. We don't want companies going out of their way to pay their dividend if that means using debt. We've got dividend streak here, which implies that only companies which have paid consecutive annual dividend increases for 10 to 51 years will be included in this list. We've also got two parameters for estimated cash flow as well. This is free cash flow. So 2023 and 2024, we don't want any companies that are expected to show declining cash flows. So that already chops off a few hundred companies. Average analyst rating, we only want things that are above a four. That chops off another hundred. And we've got a revenue estimate here for the next year, as well as a trailing dividend per share CAGR of the last 10 years. So we only want companies that are expected to grow revenues next year. So we're going to go and stick a modest 5% growth rate there for 2023. And for dividend per share CAGR, we only want companies that have been growing their dividend by a healthy amount every year for the past decade. So we're going to go ahead and specify 7.5 for the CAGR. And that breaks 4,200 companies down to 16. So I'm going to go ahead and create that screen. Here's my output. Here's all the columns that I've added in my screener. And here's all the companies that have these parameters that I might now in be interested in studying. So as I've been saying all throughout the video, there are a number of places you can find and utilize this data in Coifin. Just as one last example, we have the market scatter tool here, which allows you to present on an X and Y basis the relationship between any two variables. We give you a nice chart here, which you can change. And we also give you a table. And up here on the X and Y basis, I've used the same data series. And this time I've picked out revisions for revenues and EBIT for 2023 that have happened over the last three months. I can quickly carve out that list of companies that I might be interested in looking at further by looking at this section of the chart. So I hope that's been useful in teaching you where you can find this data, how to translate it, and how you can use it to the best of your advantage on Coifin. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. As always, you're more than welcome to reach out and we'll get back to you. Thank you.